At the top of the page, number one, it, when you go to factor by grouping, the first step is to group them. Group the first two terms, so you have the binomial 3x cubed minus x squared, and then you group the second or last two terms, so now you have the binomial 18x minus 6. Next step after you group them is to pull out the GCF of each. So the greatest common factor, there is a 1 in front of the x squared, you don't have to write it, but there is no GCF for 3 and 1. However, what's the GCF for x cubed and x squared? x squared. It's always going to be the lower exponent because x squared doesn't have three x's, but they each have two. So once I pull out that factor, there's a 3x minus 1. That's the remainder or the quotient when you divide. GCF for 18 and 6? Six. 6. So when there is a positive here, you pull out the GCF with the positive. If there's a negative, you pull it out with the negative. And in parentheses, 18 divided by 6 is 3, so 3x minus 1. These should match. So if you're doing this problem on the midterm and they don't match, you've made an error. So try to go back and find the error. That's now a GCF. That's a common factor in both. It just happens to be a binomial. So I pull that common factor out, and then these two monomials get put together for the second binomial. So x squared plus 6. You should look at these remaining factors to see, for instance, if this was x squared minus a perfect square, that'd be dots and you'd have to factor again. Since you can't factor x squared plus 6, this is done. Number two, express in simplest form. When multiplying and dividing fractions, we factor and cancel, okay? So let's start by factoring each of the expressions, and then when we get to the division sign, to divide, you actually do the, so we keep, change, flip, flip. okay? So I'm going to put the factors of x squared plus 7x plus 12 up here, which is x plus 3 times x plus 4, and then the factors of x squared minus 7x down below, and that's a GCF of x factoring. So keep, change, flip. To factor all the other um, expressions, the factors of 28 that combine to 3 are x minus 7 times x plus 4. Negative 7 times 4 is negative 28, so there's the product, and then the sum is the middle. Here, this is a dot, so the difference of two perfect squares, x plus 3 times x minus 3. And the numerator of the middle fraction is a GCF, Okay, the GCF for 3x and x squared is x. So this is actually going to be x times 3 minus x, which is a different order of the x minus 3 down here. And then last is x plus 4, x plus 4. 4 squared is 16, and then when you double 4, you get 8 in the middle. Now it's just a bunch of canceling. When you do this on the midterm, please don't cross it out so I can't see the factor. Okay, so just put a line through it. I always start left to right. Here's an x plus 7. Here's an x plus 7. I can cancel an x plus 3 with an x plus 3, an x plus 4 with an x plus 4. Now, x minus 3 and 3 minus x are not exact. What do I do in this case for an x minus 3 and a 3 minus x? It's the negative 1 rule. If you were to actually divide, so off to the side here, 3 minus x over x minus 3 is going to reduce to negative 1. Always. If you don't, um, if you're unsure, if that doesn't make sense to you, give me a number for x, any number. 7. seven. I heard 7 first. So 3 minus 7 over 7 minus 3. 3 minus 7 is negative 4, 7 minus 3 is positive 4, and negative 4 divided by 4 is a negative 1. So when you have the same expression, it has to be subtraction, though. Same um, sign, so both subtraction, but in different order. It divides out to a negative 1. And then we can cancel the x plus 4 with an x plus 4, and the x with the x. So the final answer is what? One. Not 1, but because this was the negative 1 rule? Negative, negative 1. 
Number three says to solve for y. doesn't say to check, so we just have to solve, and it's a fractional equation. So your goal is to get um, every fraction so that it has the same denominator, and then you can cross them all out and solve the top. You may not be able to see the denominator or the um, least common denominator until you factor. So let's factor all the expressions in the denominator. So this is 2 times y plus 3, y plus 3, y minus 3, 2 times y minus 3. So every fraction has to have all three factors. Okay? So the first one. Um, it has the 2, it has the y plus 3, it's missing the, it needs all 3. So there's a 2, this one's going to need a 2, so I'm going to have to double this one, right? So it's 2 times y plus 3 and y minus 3. This one has a 2 and a y minus 3, so I multiply this one by y plus 3 so that it matches. They all have to have the same factors and the same number of them. So if this one has a 2, they all need to have a 2. If this one has a y plus 3, they all need to have a y plus 3. So this one does, this one now does, and whatever you do to the bottom, you have to do the top. And then this one has the y plus 3 and it's missing the y minus 3. So we did this a little bit different. Let me erase what I was going to do over here. Okay, now at this point, you can cross this all out. Okay, so grab your writing utensil. You can cross it out and just solve the top. So the trinomial, can anyone give me the trinomial for that product? So the final answer when you multiply? So outside's positive one, inside is negative three, right? 1 minus 3 is a negative 2y when you do the full FOIL. Again, outside positive 1y, inside negative 3y, which gives the negative 2y. Last is going to be what number? Negative 3 times the 1? Negative 3. This one's easy, so minus 2 times 9, which is so minus 18 equals y squared, what's the trinomial here when you FOIL? Middle term would be? Again, outside you have the 3y, inside negative 2y. So combine those, you get a positive y, or 1y, good, and then minus 6. When you have the y squareds on both sides, what can you do? Cancel them out. We have negative 2y, negative 3 minus 18 is negative 21, equals y minus 6. So I'm going to add the 2y over. It's now linear, so no quadratic equation to solve. Add the 6 over. You get negative 15 equals 3y. Divide by 3, and y is equal to negative 5. So is that okay? We're not going to do the check, but if we go back and look at the restrictions, the restrictions for this denominator was not equal negative 3. Do you remember the restrictions from the beginning of the year? Those values that would make the denominator defined? So why couldn't have been a negative 3, a negative 3 again, or a positive 3? Since I didn't get 3 or negative 3, we're good. Okay, if you did, you'd have to reject it. Next one, number four. So subtract the square root of negative 12 from the square root of negative 48. So what is written first is what comes after the word from. So it's the square root of negative 48, and as I rewrite it, I'm going to simplify it. Largest perfect square factor, anyone know? 16. I'm going to put the negative with the perfect square, so minus, and 12 is negative 4 times 3. So this is really 4i radical 3 minus 2i radical 3. When you're adding and subtracting radicals, they have to have the same radicand, and they do. They're both radical 3's. So I just subtract 4i minus 2i is 2i radical 3. Simplify another um, 
set of instructions you, you could get for this type of question is expressed with a rational denominator. So we take and we multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of 7 minus 2i so that we're going to get rid of the i's in the denominator. When you distribute or multiply that by 10, you get 70 plus 20i. In the bottom, do you have to do the full FOIL this time? No, because they're conjugates. So just the first and the last, 7 times 7 is 49. Negative times positive is negative. 2 times 2 4, and i times i is i squared. If your calculator is in A plus BI mode for your midterm, you can do this expression, and it becomes 49 plus 4, which is 53. Do you know why that negative 4 changes to a positive 4? Because i squared is negative 1. So negative 4 times the negative 1 gives you the positive 4. So we have 70 plus 20i all over 53. Number 6. Express in simplest form in terms of i. So why don't you write down your i cycle? To multiply here, whenever you have a power to power expression, you want to simplify that first. Okay, that's got a square to the fifth. So you want to reduce that. You do have to do 2 to the fifth. Does anyone know 2 to the fifth power? It's going to be 32. I to the exponent rules, power to power, you multiply. So 10. You could write this out five times. So you could stamp it. So 3 times 32 is. I to the, you add the exponents, 11. Now, I to the 11th, draw your I cycle. Uh, we like to use, or some of you like to use that four quadrants, okay? I squared, quadrant two is going to be negative one, negative I, one. So if I start here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11. So it's 96 times negative i, which is negative 96 i. Number 7, we have to expand and do the full FOIL. So this is 64, 8 times 8. 8 times 3, 24i. 3i times 8 is another 24i. They should always match. And then 3i times 3i is 9i squared. But what does 9i squared become? So this is really 64 minus 9, which is, and then bring down your i terms, so 48i. Find and graph the solution set, quadratic inequality from the last unit. The first step, you with me, is factor. This is what we needed to go over. So factor x plus 7 times x minus 7. What are the two roots? So I put those on a number line, uh, close circles because of the equal to on the symbol. And now we have to test a number between and outside. So let's test 0. 0 is between. So when I test 0, I plug it in here. Is 0 squared minus 49 greater than or equal to 0? Well, 0 squared is 0. 0 minus 49 is negative 49. And a negative is not going to be larger than zero. So this is false. To test another number outside, I think working with 10 is easy. So if I test 10, what's 10 squared? 100 minus 49 is, is 51 greater than zero. So that's where I want to shape. So here's the graph, check. And then what's the solution? The solution is the inequality. So it's going to be x less than or equal to negative 7 as we're shading left, an and or an or, or x greater than or equal to 7. Determine the value of k that will make the roots equal. So after that lesson you watched on the Chromebooks, I think the easiest way to do it, when the roots are equal, you have equal factors, right? 
So if I, rather than doing discriminant, if I factor this, this is the double of what number? You double 6 to get 12, and you double positive 6. 6 plus 6? Now the K is the product. So then 6 times 6 is what? 36, so 36 is K. Shorter than doing the discriminant. If you did, you'd want to do B squared minus 4AC equals 0. The B is 12, 12 squared minus 4 times 1 times K. Add the 4K over, divide by 4, and K is 36. I think this, after watching that video, is much shorter. Last one, find the sum and product of the roots. The sum is negative b over a, the product is c over a. So a negative of a negative 12 over 3, 12 over 3 is 4, and then c over a is 17 thirds. Leave it improper, you can't divide. So your sum is 4, product 17 thirds.